Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about machine learning on mining hardware. What's attractive of mining hardware is that on the second-hand market, you can find very cheap prices. For example, I got this P10690 for the equivalent of 20 US dollars. Another card I will show you later is the P10600. Got it for only 60, around 60 US dollars. That card has the same specs of a GTX 1060 sleep job of RAM except that it has no head display and the PCIe bandwidth is stifled to version 1.1 instead of 3.0. Also this motherboard Maxon B85 VTS uh, also for around 20 US dollars. It has uh, as you can see five PCIe slots and uh, supports LGA 1150 socket. That said there's three main challenges with mining hardware. The first one is the very low PCIe bandwidth on both the cards and the motherboards, especially on the PCIe 1X slots where you use uh, risers just like this one. So as you may already know, most ML algorithms uh, are very data hungry and involves constantly uploading huge amount of data to the GPU, making PCIe bandwidth very important. To help illustrate, this is a diagram from NVIDIA Research you can find on their paper on the QLE framework. So as you notice on the left side, you have the CPU, on the right side, the GPU. And AI trained on games typically involves simulating a large number of frames. So it has to collect all this experience, the, the frame buffer, which the state of the rewards and action, and at every few time steps, send it over to the GPU. This requires a large number of uh, a large uh, amount of bandwidth especially for a large number of, uh, of environments also when the ai is playing the game it needs the gpu to uh, to do the inference on the policy network to choose which action to take third point is uh, reliability second hand mining hardware has typically been used 24 hours 7 at close 100 percent and for machine learning, you want reliable hardware. So that's that's a thing to consider. So in this video, I'm going to address these three main points in a solution made by NVIDIA Research. So first, let's look at our mining setup. So we use Ubuntu 1910, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Core i3 4130 CPU with four cores. Also we have four GPUs, two of them is a P10600 with six gigabytes of RAM and one is P10690 with two gigabytes of RAM. So let's take a look at the bandwidth. The first card has over three gigabytes second of bandwidth is the one on the first PCIe slot, but the other, all the other PCIe slot run at one X. So as you can see, it's all under 200 megabytes second, including the one uh, on the riser, which is the P hundred six ninety. So let's do a quick test with OpenAI baseline using the Pong environment. This is the exact same environment used by the NVIDIA Research QLE paper. So let's start. So as you can see, we're around 500 FPS. This is pretty much the maximum we can reach 
with this setup. So now let's look at the profiling results. I profiled offline. So here we're using the NVIDIA Visual Profiler. So first thing to check is the host device transfers. As said earlier, at every few time steps, uh, the CPU sends all the data to the GPU for training. So this, well, this is where you see the large block of transfers here. This is just for six, six environment, so it's not so bad. But you can imagine when you're using, for example, 128 environments at the same time, the transfer time is much larger, even on uh, on PCIe when when the PCIe bandwidth is is large too. So if you check here in your case, the throughput is a bit under 200 megabytes second, like the CUDA Z benchmark showed us. So that's consistent. The rest of the transfers is for inference, like when when the the algorithm is doing the rollouts. It needs the GPU to uh, to do inference for the policy network. So these small blocks are for inference. So in between is the CPU simulating the Pong environment. Here we have the GPU. So after receiving the batch of, of training data, trains for a while, and then the CPU restarts the, the simulation and it goes on like this. So as you can see, the GPU is underutilized and our bottlenecks is clearly the transfers in the CPU. Now, interesting thing is that even on hardware that has huge amount of cores, high PCIe bandwidth and high-end GPUs, such as the Tesla V100, you still get the same kind of bottlenecks. So last year, NVIDIA published uh, a solution for that, potential solution for that, which involves simulating the, the Atari environments on the GPU directly, which effectively eliminates the bandwidth and the CPU bottlenecks. So they claim they can reach over 11,000 frames per second on the Tesla V100. So let's try that on our on our uh, mining setup. In their paper, they suggest using A to C to maximize the the performance. So we're going to use that. Also, we're going to run this test on the second PCIe slot because the second one is a one X. takes a while to start should be a couple of seconds so as you may have noticed it uses PyTorch so it's PyTorch 1.2 alright so it started it's around 2,800 frames per second. This is much better than our 500 frames second we got last time. If we see the GPU utilization is close to 100, seems to be effective. And this result is consistent with the results in their paper where they have 11,000 frames second on the Tesla V100, the P106 100 is about five times less powerful overall than the, the Tesla card. So it's about it's about right, makes sense. Now, if you want to do a real interesting test, we can try it on all four GPUs at the same time and see how far can we go. As you can see, all three GPUs are active. All four GPUs are active on our P1690 
we have 1,500 frames per second. On our P106 100, we have close to 2,800 frames per second. The same for the other ones. And if we look at the temperature, they're quite reasonable. In case you're curious, the watt usage is over 300. So in total, we got very close to 10,000 FPS, which rivals a Tesla V100 at a very small fraction of the price. Obviously, this is not distributed training. It's four experiments running in parallel, which is not as useful as running one experiment at 10,000 FPS, but still good since most likely you want to test your algos on multiple environments at once. And about the reliability issue with mining hardware, so the first mining card I bought was a secondhand P100-600 back in summer 2018. I've been using it since without any issues. Until I bought six mining cards and one was broken on arrival. It crashed under any type of load, but I got a refund right away. Overall, I got a good experience and helped me reduce machine learning hardware costs greatly. So to conclude, before going out and buying mining hardware, make sure your use case can fit within a solution like QLE that doesn't require significant PCIe bandwidth or CPU usage. And moreover, the only, only the attack emulator has a full GPU version. You would be stuck with that. If you're crazy enough to code your own emulator in CUDA, keep in mind that more the more branching you need in your code, the less performance you're going to get. So QLE is really most effective for simple selenation. And unfortunately, QLE is not supported on EMD cards as it uses CUDA. And to my knowledge, no equivalent solutions uh, exist for Rockem presently. So that's it. Uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask it, uh, them uh, down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.